Welcome to Shani Lachamishi. These fucking mazikim throwing footballs on the glass. I'll have a nice story. These fucking mazikim. Rabbi uh, Bukit, Chaimei Bukit over Shalom once told us in Shul, people ask, why don't we see Shadim today? We read about it, we read about mediums and the Torah, it's got to be true that the witch with the, in Endor with Shmuel and Shaul, she had to be able to speak to the dead and therefore the Rebbe spoke to, her, to the dead, to at least to the Shver, at the oil, because it's got to be true because a book said so. Mind you, not one science book, but one holy book. So, Rabbi Chameh Bukit pointed out that we do see Mazikim. It was two kids that came to help the minion. One kid named was Zach and one was Keller. And they were fighting so badly. And it was very symbolic. I still remember it. It was uh, many years ago. And he said... So he said, when you see two people fighting, that's Shadim, that's Mazikim. But really, we still counted those two boys to the minion. Because we were having a hard time uh, gathering a minion. So, you know, we didn't like disqualify them from the minion because of their behavior or their beliefs. Uh, and we didn't say, wait a minute, Rachmanim, Baishanim, Goim Lechasadim, Simone Yisrael, nah, you guys can't count to the minion until you chop a little another piece of your foreskin and you go into a mikvah, right? So, and you accept Moses, all the laws of Moses through the, rabbi, through, the, through, 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 through the rabbis. Kitzra Maise, the Rambam and the Eben Ezra and the Psad Yegoin didn't believe in Shadim. But rationalists are always uh, a few. And believers are always the many. Wherever you don't have education, that's where belief in ghosts and myths and magic exist. So, these kids whacking the footballs on the glass reminded me of the story of Reb Chaim Meir. How he told us about the Shadim. Now, if, you're, if you have a child in yeshiva, you have to be able to explain it to them that magic, stories of magic, just like Harry Potter today, never really existed. We have... Um, laws of nature, which we now know as laws of nature. Historically, we did not know them as laws. We only knew nature like ocean and wind and high mountains, fuzzy animals, trees and grass. We had different names to them. And those were the many gods that uh, the Hebrew gods said, uh, don't destroy their shrines and don't have them before me. Yam was an ocean god. There was a mountain god, like you could read in the Torah about Hashem descending on the mountain, when you think about it. And many other Hebrew names were for uh, different winds, all these unexplained phenomena that the humans had no explanation for, so they made their own explanation. So. Of course, the moral of the story is very special. Rabbi Bukit was not saying that he's not going to count these two boys to the minion in East Flatbush of New York when he had kept the shul open on 51st Street. The moral of the story is don't act like a shindalid. Obviously, there is no question of what if I am one? What if I'm, uh, what if I'm Rabbi Yaisi Ashed? What if my, I'm a good shindalid? What if my job is to be the golem of Prague? So, the moral of the story was Mazikim. The best name for these Shadim were Mazikim. Ghosts and demons, I'm not sure when it entered into the Jewish canon, but I'll try to get you a year and a date. And uh, you can look it up. And uh, welcome to Shadim Bachamishi and have a wonderful week. And please do not meet any Shadim. Thank you.